I just bought an eight-year-old camera as my new main camera for YouTube, which is the Sony a6500, a camera that came out in 2016. My main camera until now has been the Canon SL3 or the Canon 250D, a camera that came out in 2019. So shouldn't that mean that the Canon's better? Well, I had some long nights thinking about this decision and I did some extensive testing. So let me tell you why I bought this camera, what I'm gaining and what I'm sacrificing now that I'm finally divorcing Canon. This is the most important aspect when buying new gear in general. What do you really need and what compromises are you willing to make to get better price to performance? Because we don't want to blow the bank. This camera retails from anything around 500 to 600 European coins as of right now. And I've been lucky enough, so this is a camera that I got from a friend, meaning I got a really good price and I was able to test it before buying, which I would highly encourage any one of you to do. If you have the chance to go look at the gear and use it beforehand, before you buy it, do that, because it will actually help you to decide if you want it or not. So my switch into the mirrorless system was rather cheap in the grand scheme of everything. Considering the prices of high-end hybrid cameras as of right now, um, I think that's, that's a pretty good price. But I did have to sacrifice a lot of things on one end to gain some massive benefits on the other. So let me tell you about that. The Canon SL3 does not have any log profile, at least not any native ones, which had me using a fake log-like profile that the camera, quite frankly, was not built for. It does its job fine. You do get a little bit more flexibility in post, but what you don't get is more dynamic range, sadly, because, again, it's not native. It's just a fake, it's just, it's just fake. But even though the Sony also just records 8-bit footage, the dynamic range is way better and the flexibility in post is way higher, which was a really important point for me personally, because I do want to use this camera for some projects for clients, for example. And let's not talk about the dynamic range and the high eye draw wolves, like it, it looks just so much better. Um, uh, let me just put some footage here from the Canon. When I use this log profile, there's no roll off, it's just, oh, bright and then oops overexposed and it looks really bad since again it is not a native log about the dynamic range i did not do extensive testing but i definitely definitely did see that this camera is just way better in the shadows and in the highlights especially you can get a lot more out of this one holy shit i'm really high up it doesn't look like it but i'm really fucking high up i'm scared all right so let's talk low light this camera is amazing at low light. Like, honestly, it's so good. If you compare them side by side, even 25,000 ISO looks clean compared to 6,400 on this camera. Like, it's 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 nuts. It's, it's honestly, I, I, I can see why lots of people switched back then. If you do anything in low light, then the Sony is definitely a better bet. I did some testing and in general, the noise pattern is just finer. You lose way less detail in comparison. Sure, there's some, still a lot of detail lost, but in comparison, in comparison, this one is just, it's ass. No competition. The Sony wins. It's that simple. The Sony shoots 4K oversampled from 6K and 1080p in 120 frames per second, which is for me more than enough, I think. I have to say though, the 6K does suffer from a lot and a lot of rolling shutter. But on the other hand, the Canon's 4K gets a huge crop, is not oversampled, has extremely bad autofocus and a rolling shutter that is maybe just as bad or even worse. So yeah, the Sony wins. So the autofocus. People back then said it was pretty revolutionary. Like it was the first time for Sony shooters that they got uh, good face autofocus, which and you know for the first first time ever, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty good. It's pretty decent. Although um, the face detection is not as good as our tests. <laughs> The face detection and, in general, the stickiness of the autofocus is not as good. The Canon does it a little bit better. And when you put the autofocus on the Sony on high, I saw some focus pulsing in the background, which is generally unpleasing to the human eye. 
but that thing was pretty quickly fixed. I just turned the autofocus to slow and it looks a lot nicer. Canon's better, but still, it's decent. It's decent enough. That's what I need in a camera. I need decent autofocus that I can work with. And that is what this Sony delivers. So, yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Another thing is customizability. This thing is not customizable whatsoever. I think it lacks a lot of function. You get decent fast with it, but it only has a single dial that you can use for shutter and f-stop, so that is quite annoying. And there's barely any custom features, and you have to deep dive into deep dive. <laughs> and you have to deep dive into the menu system to get to a different menu system to then go and add stuff. And all that stuff is not customizable. It's just some predetermined buttons that you can change. On the Sony on the other hand, you have not one, not two, no, you have 10. You have 10 different custom buttons that you can do anything with, as well as a whole function menu that you can customize entirely again. I don't know how many, how many, how many things there are there. That's like, there's a lot of things that you can customize. And while we talk about the feeling, this is mostly plastic and that's generally not good. But this thing, the full chassis is made of metal. It, it feels really, really high quality. And to be honest, I don't have the hugest of hands. So this, this tiny DLSLR had like enough grip for me and the Sony does as well. I don't, I don't complain at all. I think it's, it's quite good actually. Okay, well, let's talk about the biggest cons. All right, so the three biggest downsides I have with this camera is number one, I already said it, the rolling shutter. It's bad, it's really bad. If you do some casual shooting, it might be fine if you have some IBIS inside the lens as well, but in general, you, you really notice it and it's really not quite that pleasing to the eye. Number two is battery life. This thing fucking, it eats, the, it eats these for breakfast. I have three of those with me at all times. And you can get through these in like four hours easily, easily. With on and off shooting and photography, you do get a lot more life out of these, but if you film constantly, it's basically game over for you. Number three is the screen. The screen, first of all, it doesn't flip out. You cannot see yourself, which is annoying as fuck. But the worst thing about it is that most of the time, you cannot even see it at all. On days like this, where you have a little bit of sunlight, you cannot see it. It's so dim. And if you go into 4K or in 120 FPS, it gets even dimmer, which is annoying and quite frankly, can break your shoot. Number four, and this is subjective, uh, the Canon colors. Um, I think I'm gonna miss them. They're not bad. The older Sonys tend to have a lot of magenta in their colors, which, especially if you go low light, looks really jarring. So, yeah. I also like to use vintage lenses or lenses which do not have image stabilization. So having inbuilt image stabilization like the Sony has is pretty decent. Uh, it's pretty cool, pretty. Uh, the IBIS is not as good as Panasonic's, but it is, you know, it's something at least. And if you have like a 50 mil without image stabilization, I would take any IBIS over not IBIS at all. Wow, that sounded really stupid. All right, whatever. But yeah, that, that's, that's basically it. I'm, I'm a Sony man now and this, I'll probably still use this as a B-cam for the next few videos, but overall, I think this camera just doesn't perform well enough for me. Other than I guess, uh... Goodbye.